when you minister, you, you need faith. You need the anointing. Without the anointing, it's like you have a gun without bullets. There, how, how are you going to minister? Sure, you might speak out of your head. You might speak out of knowledge. But you're not going to speak a message from God if you're not anointed by God to do so. There are some instances like the donkey that spoke to Balaam, right? But in general, if you want to be a minister of God, you need the anointing of the Holy Spirit. How do you get the anointing? Well, for one, you repent and you turn to Jesus. When you repent and you turn to Jesus, you receive the Holy Spirit. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive the anointing. It's very simple. And you ask the Holy Spirit for the gifts of the Spirit. That you want to prophesy, ask the Holy Spirit to help you prophesy. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you minister the gifts of speaking in tongues. You want to learn how to speak in tongues? Ask the Holy Spirit. I can't teach you how to speak in tongues. I can give you my experiences. For example, my personal experience was I was at home. I was alone. And this was a, like a few years ago. And I had asked the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to speak in tongues. And I asked him, but I, I, I asked him with a sincere heart. I'm not going to lie, I was a little nervous. But when I asked him, I just remember lifting my hands up. And I kid you not, my elbows felt like if they were locked. And when they felt like they were locked, my mouth just started. I remember the exact syllables. Ah, bah, 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 bah. Mind you, I had never heard those syllables before. I just started, that, those were my first tongues. And then later on, I start hearing other people say those same tongues, and I'm like, wait a minute. Wow, like I've never met you. How, how did you, you know? But at the end of the day, we have to acknowledge and recognize it's all God. It's all God. Even when I minister, when I'm talking to you right now on the camera, I'm not the one speaking. This is God putting the words in my mouth because I have the anointing of God. I'm anointed by God, right? Because I have the Holy Spirit. So because I have the Holy Spirit, I'm here with the privilege of ministering to you that are watching this. Without the anointing, I can't talk to you like this. Without the anointing, I won't be, I won't be able to say. Sure, I might give you like scriptures and I'll give you what they mean and head knowledge and I'll, I'll teach you. Like, like if you were to go to a museum, I'll, I'll, point out, I'll point out to the picture and I'll tell you, okay, this picture means that. But that's as far as you'll get without the anointing. I'll give you information, but I won't share with you his heart. The only way I can share the heart of God with you is with the anointing. Without the anointing, it's impossible. Uh, like another variation of Dr. Pepper, but it's really good. <clears throat> you need the anointing. Without the anointing, it's a challenge to minister. Oh. Well, for one, the, the anointing is essential. There's no way. There's no way for me to talk to you without it. And honestly, I, I think I'm gonna bring in two topics in one video. You know, what the heck, why not? You know, walking with Jesus isn't easy at all. Whoever told you it was gonna be easy, I'm sorry to tell you, but then I give you the whole picture. When you walk with Jesus, man, you're gonna bleed. You're gonna suffer. It's gonna, it's gonna be tough. You deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me, it's no joke. It's not just some cute thing you hear at church, man. Once you live it out, it's, it's tough. You, you will suffer. You will suffer because he suffered, you know? And Jesus said, no servant is greater than his master. And that's 100% true. Now, Maybe not physically, right? He was crucified physically. But a walk is it's not going to be easy at all, man. It's going to be a very big challenge. But Jesus said, narrow is the way that leads to life. Many look for it, but only few find it. So this is the thing about it. Many people are intentional of looking for the narrow road, but very few find it. Doesn't that concern you? That even if you might be looking for the narrow road, you're not going to find it because only few find it. Doesn't that concern you? That only if you find it. Do me a favor, like this video and subscribe to the channel right there. Share this video with somebody that you know is gonna bless somebody. And when you walk with Jesus, man, it's, he's gonna take you through a season of wilderness. And that wilderness is no joke, bro. That wilderness is, it's crazy. It's a, it's, a, it's a crazy season in your life. You might say, well, it's a quiet season. Well, yeah, sure, but it's just you and him in that season. Usually he isolates you. Usually he, just people start to leave around you or, or go silent. When, when that happens and you have a prayerful life, you talk to God, you talk to the Lord, you have a strong communication with the Lord, I can bet you 
that you might be walking in a wilderness season whenever those things start to happen. God will isolate you, but He will isolate you because He wants you to get to know Him more, more profoundly. I'm not going to say that I'm not grateful for those seasons because I've gotten to know God on a more deeper level in that way. I've gotten to see His heart on a more real level. You, you get to know God in the wilderness, like more profoundly. That's why Jesus would go to the, um, to the wilderness and He would seclude Himself from society. He is God. But He still went away to the wilderness to talk to God. To have that communication with God, that fellowship with God. He went with His Father to the secret place. So because even if he went, Jesus being God, still went to the secret place to be with his father, how much more should we? <sighs> but God is faithful and he's never failed me. Even in my lowliest moment, because yes, a Christian walk will be lowly, man. I'm not going to lie to you. It will get lonely, you know. Um, but he's with you the entire time. Jesus has been with me the entire time. There's not one moment where I felt where I was abandoned. I, did I feel abandoned? I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm like God. I don't feel you today. Where Where are you? His word says, "I will be with you till the end of the age," and you can bet that you can count on that word to stand. There's no reason why He would leave you if you're in Christ. He will never leave you. He will be with you till the end of the age. Let that sink in. It gets real with Him out there. You know, the wilderness. Your solo story is is a story that really matters when it comes to walking with the Lord. Sure, going to church is important. Acts 2.42 tells you the whole purpose of church. Fellowship, breaking bread, and instruction and teaching. That's the point of church. Instruction and teaching, but the relationship happens outside of church. The real relationship, the real, the real of the real happens outside of church. As in like, when you're alone, when you're doing that, how are you with God? Like, what is He taking you through? Has he, if, he, if He's taking you through fire, and if you cling, and, and if you have clung on to God, during that fiery trial, during that season where you're like, God, what in the world is happening? That's when you get to see the heart of God for you saying, hey, you're going through hell right now, but I'm with you. I'm going through hell with you. I believe it's Psalms 139 where it says, if I ascend to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. Psalms 23, though I walk through the darkest valley, I will not fear, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Imagine you're walking, picture this, you're walking through a very dark, the, you're in the bottom of a mountain, and it's extremely dark, and the road is very narrow, but the mountain is extremely dark. That, that area you're passing through is extremely dark. You can barely see anything ahead of you. And you just know that he's with you. He says, I'm right here with you. You're not alone. You might not see what's ahead of you, but I'm with you. I'm right there with you. But the sto That's what the solo story is. And you can't tell me you've never been through that area. Everybody passes through that area. Whoever tells you that they've never been through fire or that after they came to Christ, life has been sunshine and rainbows, they're lying to you, man. That's not true. In fact, it's the opposite. If you come to Christ, bro, you're going to be a target to the devil. No one's gonna come after you. I'm not gonna lie. Devil hunts after who God loves. That's why Paul warns us in, in Romans and in Ephesians, watch out for the roaring lion that prowls around. For Satan prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking who to devour. That letter was to Christians. It wasn't to, to the worldly people, it was to Christians. It gets real out there, man, when you walk with the Lord. It's the most realest thing out there, man. When stuff gets real out there, you can bet Jesus will say, I'm with you. So you come across any warfare, you can bet that Jesus will be there to defend you from anything and everything. Put your faith in Him. Put your trust in Him. He won't let you down. You're still here, aren't you? There you go. Alright, that's it for today, guys. Good talk.